the Van Antrey Guild's North West Branch event. Um, tonight we've got uh, Ian Smith on doing his art demonstration. I've saw this is right out by our sponsor, Full Amount, who will be doing the demonstration after the interval. Uh, we've run a little over time, so uh, we'll get going with this. We'll have a quick interval and then we'll get back on with Full Amount. So um, we'd like to welcome on stage Ian Smith on. <laughs> um, just um, before I start, you know, because of the time session, the time we've got to, I'll probably have about an hour to do a painting which normally I'd spend maybe three, four, sometimes five hours on. Now what I've done is I've chosen a nation painting with a sunset. And the reason I'm doing this, I didn't know it was this afternoon and what I was going to do, to be quite perfectly honest. But the reason I've done it is because it's a simple drawing, which is about 15, 20 minutes, uh, which I've just quickly done before it came out. And also, hopefully, the register is better for you out there because certainly further at the back there, you know, it's not so many figures in streets, etc. So you're never going to see it. So I'm going to do some bigger swatches of colour. The idea is to explain to you what the bare bones of my work is like. You know, the, the, the idea of uh, putting colour instead of spending too much time on drawing, for instance, um, the mechanics of it, and simply to get on with the, like the painting do the work rather than the drawing. Now, all this is. This is actually a mouthboard I'm working on. It's quite a colour mouth make it. But you don't get straight on to the, to the actual mouthboard itself. It's a bit of orthodox, really. I put um, a primer on it. It's a primer. Without that, you find that some of the actual um, pastel I'm using can slip off most of it, and up on the shirt, on the floor, and on the shoe. So this is the idea. This is what stick to it a little bit better. And as I work on it, hopefully it register, you know, where you are, how that's happening. I'm going to spend most of the time with my back to you this evening. But if you've got any questions, just shout out and I'll try and answer them as best I can. Now, having said that, can you get on with it? This is from my studio, this. You can see this tape there. 20 years of rubbish on it. yellows at the moment, putting this on and eventually I'll just tone it down. But that'll speak for itself as I go along.
terrible out there tonight. Good shot, what's your going to make? Not got that far to come. I move out of the way as much as possible so you can see what's on. I'm just establishing shapes at the moment, just watch as a pillar. Just big broad shapes. Nothing in the drawing whatsoever really. No detail. Not necessary really for this. Can everybody hear okay? I was uh, concerned about the noise of the fans. Are yeah. they too loud? Yeah. Right. If you turn it off then, um, might be a little harm.
This is about roughly the speed I would work at in the studio. It's uh, because it's good to get these broad swatches of colour on as soon as you're not working on such a blank canvas. Um, having said that, as I said, this was a tinted canvas, obviously, not a tinted board, I beg your pardon, uh, that's a starting on, uh, because it registers more easily and quickly, and certainly for tonight's exercise. Plus the fact with it being a mount board itself, um, as I said, by colour mount, will make it, it's already got that pigment on it, that roughly what I wanted. And then put the uh, put the, the pastel primer on it just to make the it's like a glue really. It helps this pastel, which after all is a charcoal substance, adhere to it without falling off too easily. Not too quickly. So instead of ending up on the floor, it ends up in the lungs sometimes, which is a slightly different problem. Sorry if this isn't registering too well at the back at the moment, but I've had to pull it over here because the light, it's if I bring it over here I'm in the shadow, and you're not going to see it. So, this is at least, you're able to see some of it going on. It's not ideal. This is called the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Afterwards, during the break, if you come along here, you can actually hopefully see a bit more of how this uh, pasta works with um, with this particular base. Um, might make a bit more sense for you. Now I've got an orange, this, this is on the, on, on the Grand Canal, it wouldn't be orange obviously, but with the reflection uh, that's coming from the sky, there's obviously going to be a lot of orange in it. Uh, plus, of course, you have your artist license to make it work, and uh, we're all a bit crazy anyway, so that's fine. I'm going to put some green into it, which is totally opposing now to the rest of the colours that I've used up to now. There's about what, white, lemon yellow, cadmium yellow, mid-orange, dark orange, red. It's about five or six uh, colours gone in, uh, or even an actual hues of colours gone in. Now this green is a strange colour to put on, but it will start to make sense, hopefully, as I move along with the painting. Green on it. Again, I'm looking at yeah, that orange over the top of the green. I know it's not really registering with, with that at the moment, I'm sorry about this, but if you come up afterwards and have a look, it might make a bit more sense.
We've got an old bristle brush here, which if you look in, set in line with the, the actual setting stone, to brush some of this off. Short, sharp movements with it to create a flow of water, a water effect. <coughs> Stand back, shoulder a bit. Again, that with the original. See, what it is, it, it's building up and building up. Uh, put colour on, adding more colour, putting more colour on top of that. There comes a point with pastel where you can saturate it and it makes no difference what you do with it. It just actually becomes a bit of a total mess. So, if you don't want it too hard, first of all, just build it up so you're sure. Quite often that will help. No hard and fast rules to it, they're just different ways of working. This is one, one way which I work, there are many different ways. But to work you know, uh, relatively well, I'm putting this bit of colour in here, not that one, that one will do. These old t-shirts come in handy, you know, they're brilliant. <laughs> Don't throw them away, keep them on them. Above the sky line, above the, the, the redness of the sky, etc., you'll often, nature tells you that. You look at it, quite often you find that there's a blue above it, and you know, it, it reflects quite well in the water. Um, you know, this type of you know, lagoon situation, uh, and it helps, it helps the painting, and you use it to fullest advantage. And it breaks up the monotony of these. Oranges that are on there at the moment, you know, you just again artist license. We use a bit of imagination and a, a bit of what nature is telling us to do. Just going to 
got the UDLB room. Um, Re-established with just black. But this is a roundly plastic, by the way, that I'm using. Um, all this, all the material I use here comes from a place called Jackson's. Have you heard of it in, uh, in London? It's uh, Jackson's Art Supply. They're not paying me for saying that. <laughs> I'm just telling you that's where I get my stuff from. They've never let me down. It's always been pretty good stuff. Always been pleased with them. So it's, uh, this one's a roundly square pastel. It's still a soft pastel. You can actually feel it. Oh, here it breaking. It falls on the floors of working with it. Without it, you couldn't really work on this car in this fashion because it is designed for uh, the framing, really, framing uh, material. But artists really have to experiment, that's mostly what you spend your time doing. And uh, you know, I've got portfolios full of, I suppose, failures, but I don't know whether it's truly failing you know, or whether you just staying with the idea of experimentation because if you don't experiment, if you don't fail, you don't learn anything. You've got to be prepared to fail. Which is alright if you're just starting a painting. <laughs> it's not funny when you get to the end of it. You know, I've spent quite a few days on something. This is an ugly black mess at the moment, but just bear with me. I will uh, be revealed. different colours going on here just to give me a, an indication of where I'm going with it because quite often you just don't know because, because this is all just completely from my memory of the last time I was at the place of work there. I've been lucky enough to work in, uh, in Venice on many occasions, really lucky. It's beautiful. Only one Venice really. But sometimes it can be a bit too noisy but the place itself is Fantastic. 
the sketch around every corner. Stage there, but I've got some fixes in on it, which is called Lasco Fix. Um, and it just allows you to put some more work on the top without, uh, without it sinking into the previous pastel line. You know, it smells like acetone, I think it is acetone, you can get a bit high on it. Putting some furniture on these, uh, on these gondolas at the moment. Make them look a bit more like what they're supposed to be. The idea of pastel too is if you, if you put pastel on, and um, <coughs> no matter what you put it on, if, uh, if you rub it in too much, what happens is it starts to mud up. And it becomes a bit of a flat nothingness because this pastel or these pastels are full of tiny pigments on. So when you put them on, the light catches each one of them with millions of little pigments and it, and it bounces back off. So if you rub it into the car, you lose that luminosity. Now you can use that to a certain extent, a little bit of rubbing here, a little bit of rubbing there, that's fine. But the idea is if you can get it on and while you put it on, leave it on. You can always add to it, take a bit away. But if you rub it in too much, it becomes a bit grey across the grey scale and, and you lose this luminosity with it.
to say, I think it's a bit unorthodox working on the on this type of card. Uh, but to me, if, as long as you fix it with some, with a with a pastel primer in this in this respect, then it doesn't matter what you work on. You can work on plastic. It doesn't matter as long as it sticks to it. That's fine. But purists, we may just think, well, you know, you can buy the card ready-made, I know you can, and, uh, and it's got like a marble just on it, which is very nice. And in actual fact, I think this actual uh, pastel primer that uh, I use has got marble dust in it anyway. It's the finest type of, uh, of grain you can get. And you get pumice, and then you get sand, and then you get bricks, and water, and everything else. So, I think it's as smooth as you wish to get. So this is uh, loosely the idea, an idea I would work on in the studio um, and, and I would spend several hours doing it but if it, obviously if I was doing that here we would run, run out of time so you bear with me and understand that we're working with the time we've got then it uh, might make a bit of sense for it. into the uh, into the uh, the bed of the the, the uh, canal. And this is why you've got to be. It's not so bad tonight. I've not spent that long on it. But if I was to spend a day on it, you've got to be a bit brave when it gets to this stage because you can write the painting up. And this is why you've got to be a bit brave with it because I'm now going to go straight across the work that I previously put in. And at that stage, there's no real going back from it. You're putting something in there which you can't get rid of. Right through the sky, right through the, the water here, right through the boats. We're not proud, we just stick it in there break this whole scene up, upset the apple cart. Now 
Now I'm using an intense black on this. In reality, I would put some colour into this, but I just know that from where you are, it wouldn't register. I'll start messing about the colours. So I'm using the easiest possible way for you, so you can see it. Um, it makes it, it creates a sort of pattern of design. It, um, and you've got things like you can put in here, for instance. Um, you know, you've got places where they're more up to. All the, all these bits of things that I've done, the Venetians did it on purpose for us. I said, yeah, come on, we'll make life easier for them, make it interesting. And that uh, was very nice, very nice like that. Actually, these gondolas, gondolas, the uh, gondoliers, they could be a bit. We just uh, can't walk past one without them uh, dragging you on to it, saying, come on, I can do you a deal. If you tell them you've been on them 50,000 times, they don't agree with you. They say, no, it doesn't matter, I still do you deal. So what I'm saying about this right now is that it's a matter of refining it as we go along. And all I would do is just to keep doing the same thing that we've done this evening in, in what, about half an hour's work too, and, and it could go on for another couple of hours, but it wouldn't show you any more. Um, so I'm not going to do really any more of it now, I'm going to leave it. And the reason I'm doing that is I think the chap from Colm is going to have a word with you after you're on a break. And I certainly want to hear any questions coming from you because nobody said anything at all. <laughs> and I'd love to hear what you thought of me. So if you've got anything to say, where's Christian? We're all right, We're all right for now for uh, some questions. He's gone. Um, so come on, somebody's got something to say. Questions, please. Is that really the Leaning Tower of Pisa? No, it's joking. Oh, it was leaning on the I apologise <laughs> because we were late arriving. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. That was my idea of what it was. And I'll tell you what happened. Unless I get, this isn't just a walking stick, it doubles as a mile stick too. Nice. And what happens is if I don't put a straight line down, when I'm working, see how closely I'm working with it, I'm going like this, and I'm going like this, and I'm going like this, and the buildings are going with me. So I have to stand up if it's not and put a straight line down with a T square. That's what I'm saying. So easy to tell. It'd be the Leaning Tower of Pisa if I didn't do that. Or Leaning Tower of Venice, I'll just read that for Sorry, don't look up. Yeah, originally it was, what happened was, um, th there's other things in, in here too. When I, I've done this dome here, just to, as a general shape, but in reality, there are, that is the general shape of it, but there's all sorts of other things going on, like um, chimney pots, spires, all sorts of things really, that uh, would make for an interesting skyline. But that is roughly the shape of it that place on the Grand Canal. It's a well, very well known spot and the name of it will lead to me somewhere in the mind. I'll come back later and I'll go all the way on over that was the name of it. It's an island but it's where the gondolas in the evening, they always park up like that and they just take it off and go in the bar somewhere. So that's when people like me come along and say, hey, it's not my time now. And you can spend an hour before the sun actually vanishes, so, which is what I did when I first went there. Uh, yeah, basically. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I was thinking that it in terms of obviously an optical illusion, but you said you created a horizontal scene, but where I'm looking at, the way I'm looking at it, is the dome is like a corner, and the, the buildings are going small that way, yeah. and that way to create like a corner. Yeah, so it gives it some 3D. It gives it, yeah, it gives it a perspective, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, and that's what so, you need to do. It, what, what, by horizontals, what I meant is rough. Horizontal shape, not, not the actual bits, the actual overall. It's a horizontal piece of card for a start. And then you've got like the, the sky goes on, and then you've got this middle ground going up. Even though it's got shapes in it, it's a piece of work going along, isn't it? There. And then you've got, you've got the canal. And even the bolts, the, the gondolas, even though the shapes in their own fashion, they're still in the start of row. So to break it up with these, Pieces here, these okay. they, these um, piles, these, these big mooring um, piles. It's, it's, it's handy because it, you know, it gives them an extra interest, artistically speaking. It seems to me depth because you've got the boats going that way and that way, and then you've got the building and tapering off as if it's going in 
into the skyline. Yeah. Into the It does, and in actual fact, I could even lose more. Yeah, sorry, in actual fact, I could even lose more by um, creating a, 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 bit, a better perspective by making this area even lighter. I'll do that anyway. See, I don't know whether you can see that, or whether that's made it any. Just lay, loosely laying that on top of it, the same with the other side. You know, it can vanish into the distance in that respect. Is that the masking tape? Sorry? The masking tape. Yeah, um, that masking tape, when I put it on, was for the sun. If, if I'd have, if I'd have um, left it and just gone over it with just the oranges and the yellows and things like that, because I wanted the intense white to come onto it, I would have lost the ability to get that intense white back. I could have brushed back with the brush and got the white somewhere near, but never in that real crystal clear white that you, you actually want being the brightest part, the brightest area. So I held on to it as long as I could. In fact, I can still put a bit more into that, left it for now, but I can make it even slightly whiter than it is. It doesn't have to be intense white, as long as it's a bright white and it will have yellow in it now, obviously. You can never always, you can never bring it back. It can it forever be um, adulterated in some way with the pigment that surrounds it. It's because I was coming across it all the time um, for quite a while. What I didn't want to happen was, uh, was, was to, to lose that sun completely, to lose that point of brightness, because I wanted the reflections here to, and they have to mirror that brightness. I'll just put a bit of, a bit of fun in it, break the skyline of these top. You, you know, these are things that I would do, refining as I go along, making shapes. As I say, bearing in mind it, it is from memory, and I can't, uh, I know I've got a lot wrong about it, but for this exercise I think it's, it's, it works. Do okay. you think you could possibly uh, add more depth to the, paint, the work by, by maybe thickening up some of the uh, um, the, the, the mooring poles, you know, because yes. they look very similar. It, what they are, is, yes. Uh, <coughs> what, what they are, you can actually make them a lot thicker, obviously, and, and they should be thicker. These are thinner than they should than they actually are, and you can do that. Um, I didn't spend enough time, enough time to do that and, and take them enough. You're talking about the monotonous and so on, you, you know. To be honest, yes. they, they're a little bit same, yeah. and running the same way. And that's fair comment because they should be thicker and thinner, you know. The nearer you are, then the, then the thicker they are. And the nearer ones would be tall as well, wouldn't they? Yeah. Different shapes, different, well, different sizes, yeah, different widths. So, um, yeah, that, that's fair. Yeah, that's, that, that's the way it should be. And that's what I would do if I were spending more time. Things yeah. like that. Okay. You know, when I think sometimes if I finish a piece of work, Put it on the studio floor, not signed in. I walk away from it, and then perhaps the day after, I walk in and go, oh, it's no good. It's it's it years with me. You know, yeah. I go years and look at something and, and decide to change it because <laughs> yeah. I'm not, I wasn't happy with it. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And I find a good it. idea too, too is to um, is to either turn it upside down and look at it, or I look through it through a mirror, and you're looking at it for the first time through a mirror because I'm looking at this day after day maybe these things and you can't always see it you know uh, I've looked at you know I do a lot of um, uh, skin tones and, and you know like brown, you've got brown skin you've got white skin you've got Chinese mm -hmm. skin you've got and, and they're all reflecting differently my skin reflects differently and if you don't get those reflections right it, it, it might, but it looks like the person not it doesn't like it can look idiotic so I put it down and I walk away and I come back again and I thought, yeah, you know, I missed that shader and I missed this shader because yeah. light reflects, you know, off skin. And, and, and you know, I work a lot in the studio on uh, on uh, a model on life, but from life. Right. I did it with ballerinas, I've done it with, with youths, men and women, you know, and, uh, and and from all backgrounds, and you're learning all the time. And that's the pleasure of it, really. The pleasure it is, the learning of it. And, and I think, and in fact I know, 
and serious with it. I never get that serious. If I get to a stage where I think I don't want to know anymore, I'm, I'll wrap it up, I'll hang my brushes up. Because it's the learning of it that, that matters and, and, and the interest and the experimentation. And you never know and you can't know everything. And there are some fantastic things. Because life, is, work is, life is, not just, it's not just pacing, is it? No, no, no. It's the arts form that you have no, to no. keep pushing the boundaries, so to speak. That's right, exactly right. Exactly right. And, and it is a learning curve, always. Oh, yeah. uh, and it's so important. If you, if you stop thinking about that, you know, you lose the ability to enjoy the learning of it. And for me, seriously, I, I don't know what to do. I just, why do it, you know, if you're not learning anything? <laughs> There's nothing new in what you're doing. You know? You've heard that expression, cliche. Well, I think your work can be cliche. You know? and, uh, as I said, a lot of fantastic artworks out there. And I've got a really open mind about it. There's so much different types of artwork, uh, so many different types of it, but the, you know, from the modern art side of it for a start, you know, and if we all have our opinions on it, right now or wrong, we call it art, call it what you like, you've heard it. Uh, but the ability to draw, I think, is, is, a, is an essential part of, of art. And then, when you've learned it, you can then start to destroy it in your own head and say, right, well, I'm not having that, that's got to be an abstract. But if you can, perspective, for instance, perspective is one of the most important things in art because it rules all our lives. Perspective here, perspective of this room, simple one, two, three point perspective. Uh, we don't know it, but we look at it all the time. And if you can learn the rules, there aren't many rules, as I've said, in art, and I don't often use the word. But if you can learn the rules of perspective, you can then bend the rules of perspective, but you have to know them to bend them, to break them. And that's the way I work with them. You know, I just work at street scenes. I've worked a lot. I've been lucky enough to work in Paris for many, many years, for many Parisian scenes. And uh, if you saw the actual streets that uh, after I finished painting with them, they sort of bent a bit more than they should do, you know, because it worked with this artist's license and it makes it, if you want to make it work like that, you're the painter, you're the artist, you make it work, you know. Just because that's the rule doesn't mean to say you can't break it. I'm all for breaking rules. Step outside that box. And let's face it, this in reality wouldn't look like this, would it? Because as an artist, you can say, well, blow it, you know, I'm doing it, I'm doing it, you know. Well, and then I'll tone it down later, but and then you tone it down, you're disappointed sometimes. I should have left it, you know. Why bother? Leave it. If you're happy with the first two times, your first sketch, your first rendition of a painting, even a major painting, is often the best piece of work, I find. You know, the sketch. Often they have the painting because you've been looked at the sketch, you know, and that's disappointing. But that's down to you as a technician, you know, going to make it work, going to make it work. So I'm waffling. Anybody got another question? <laughs> I want to know what the uh, name of the primer is. The primer is called um, Golden, it's by the firm Golden, G O L D E N, Golden Pastel Primer. Um, the people that supply it, Jackson's. Art supplies in yeah. London. You find it on, uh, on Tinternet. You yeah. find it there somewhere. Um, very good suppliers, actually, as I said, they, they've never let me know. I always, mine's always a telephone order, like, three or four days later. Is that the case? I do not, I believe we'll get it from elsewhere. How about Ken Bonds? Perhaps. It's not years since I was in Bromley, so I, I don't know. To I'm, mm -hmm. I'm going back about 30 years at Ken Bromley. <laughs> In Bolton, isn't it? Speak Is it in Bolton, that one? Ken Bromley's, yeah. Orange. Orange. Yeah. It was Bolton. It was in Bolton. That's Orange. when I last was there. Yeah. 40 years ago. I don't know to stop it now. Stop how we're winning. <laughs> so. You wouldn't recommend hairspray as a fixative, then? I would have done it when I was a bit like down on the hill and, you know, hairspray was the best thing to use. And it does work to a certain extent. It does tend to darken your painting quite a bit. Your pastel or your dry. I wouldn't put it on the dry. Uh, but even your pastel, it tends to, it tends to darken it too much. And, become, and then you've got to go over it again and put highlights in it. And you get twice as work. There's, there's various um, uh, fixatives. And they can tend to float around about seven or eight pounds a can. Um, this is called what's called fix, again from Jackson's. Um, and, and I don't use a lot of it, you know, just spray it near enough the end to keep to stop. So the frame, like Christopher Musson over there, <laughs> complained if he gets a piece of uh, 
you know, a pastel work and it, it shakes it because I'm over the glass and I know that it's just cut off, you're not going to make it happy. So we've got to fix it to be fair to the frame really and stop it falling down the dust. Um, that's what that last one fixes, and that's very good. That's excellent stuff. Air spray, I think you can use it, but it's fair enough. It's fair enough, because it, it will darken. Mm. You started with soft pastels. Do you always start with soft pastels? No, it um, depends on the scene. Uh, sometimes I'll draw with a harder pastel. Start drawing with a harder pastel. Like this, this black I was putting in there, and the down strokes I put in there, is actually a it's still classed as a soft pastel, but it's a hard, it's a soft, if you will. It's round and square pastels, um, not that expensive. Um, and they are soft because sometimes you, I have a tendency to really press hard me. I get like a bit intense with it sometimes. And it breaks because all over the place, so it's not hard. But you can get harder pastels to start for drawing. But I usually use them for the drawing for the bits of detail work. Like, um, and then go on with a soft pastel. And then perhaps spray it with this spray and then let it dry uh, on six minutes and then go on it again with softer pastel and build it up a little bit like that, you know, it's a technical thing, but start with harder. You can, you can finish with hard pastel, but the, the problem is, if you're going over soft pastel with hard pastel, it's like sinking in if you me, like the skin on the paint, if you push into it, it breaks into it, so it can be a bit disappointing. But that's alright if you're trying to see trees, for instance, and you want some extra branches, you can go in with it after that. And then put some extra leaves on it, etc. So you build it and build it up. So they, they, they have the jobs, hard, soft pastels, and the medium pastels. <coughs> I, um, I use them all. I mean, there's a pastel which is um, it's quite expensive, but it's unbelievable the pigment. It's called Schmink. I think it might be German, I'm not sure, I think. And I think it's spelled S C H M I N C K E. Somebody's going to tell me that's wrong, but I think that's what it is. It's called Schmink. And I defy anybody to get more stronger um, pigment than what you do in those pastels. They're not that big, but they're very intense and they're quite expensive. And they're not for amateurs, to be fair, they're not funny, but you waste your time. <coughs> you don't need to do that. It's if you want that extra intensity for the extra piece of work that you've got, that you think this is a bit special, you know. And that's when you bring the big colours in. <coughs> it's not only pastel that they use, though, is it? No, no one. In fact, uh, I use oils more than I do pastels, and it, it was pointless trying to do an oil later tonight, so I thought I'd do something that would show up a little bit better because to try and register the people further at the back anyway. I sort of knew what it would like. I would rather bring this forward, but then I'll lose the light, see, so actually, we should have brought you on forward, shouldn't we? Yes. yes. We should have done yes. um, But they were all laid out when I came in, so. Who am I to mess with the furniture? Uh, no, I do oil, so I'm um, uh, some acrylic. I do an acrylic sometimes as a, as a, um, a background or an under, underpainting for an oil. Um, but mostly I'll just go straight on with oil onto a canvas or a board. It doesn't matter which, which of them work or not. Uh, yeah, oils. I would imagine about 80% oils. Uh, a little bit of hardly any percent of, of uh, acrylics. And then you know, nearing 20% of the pastels. What's it about the acrylics that you don't like then? <coughs> Sorry? What is it about the acrylics that you're not so fond of? It's not that I don't like them, it's just that they're, they've been new in my lifetime, these acrylics, and um, I'm a stickler for change. I find that if I've got into a, a bit of a. And I've, having said what I've just been saying about experimentation, it seems to smack against it. What I'm trying to say is, is that I, there are some great acrylic artists. And they use acrylics, they spray with them, they use them as in pasto, and they boost like super photo realism. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's where they belong, a lot of them. <coughs> um, I, if I use it as a background, or as I should say, as an underpainting, I'm happy to do that because I can get to about a third of the painting, maybe not quite, you know, 20% of the painting, and, uh, and then go on with the oil afterwards. And, 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 and then when it's finished, it's all oil on the top anyway, all the acrylic was was to give me a quicker start. And in that respect, that's how I use them. I'm happy using them like that. Uh, you know, I don't experiment all at the time, but I'm a bit scared of them, really. <laughs> I'd rather sometimes stick with what I know if it's for a commission. If it's just for myself, I've got buckets of paint and stuff that I throw on anything, you know. I do I use anything. And I do, you know, it's all sorts of scrapers, combs, 
you know, uh, you know, these codes oh, yeah, are yeah, you know, 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 you if you wanted a quick drying surface, you would certainly use a drill. Because the drying yeah. day, really. Yeah. And they can have the same properties as water chloride filters. You can if you let them down, you know. Yeah, I mean, you can use, that's what I'm saying, yeah. you can spray with them. Yeah. You know, I don't know if some artists do. Well, spray with water chlorides or No, or acrylics. 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 And to a great, a great dexterity too. Some of the uh, still life I've seen, they define it as they cannot photograph. Yeah. But that's the way they want it, that's the way they work. Uh, I, more, more these days, I've come away from this photographic. If I wanted a photograph, <coughs> paint in a photographic way. These days, I'm, I'm, and I'm not into abstract as such, but I like sometimes an abstract feeling about the painting rather than I like it to be painterly, if you would be, if that sounds right, rather than being like photographic. I painted photographic. I used to be as, as an engraver for many, many years, and engraver doing what uh, like security engraving, similar to like bank notes, etc. that type of thing. So my style of drawing was very, very fine and detailed. You had to draw in those days, when I was an apprentice, to be able to get the job to engrave with steel dyes, copper plates, brass dyes, etc. Um, and, and it took me years to pull up, because I always painted, because I always, that's what you did mm -hmm. as a, an engraver in those days, and drew, always drew. But it took me years to come away from that solid, linear effect that always came into my drawings and the paintings and I don't really want to go back to it. It's becoming, it's probably my age, it's becoming looser and looser. My eyes are going, which do you ever work, deteriorating. So I'm walking away from the work and I'm losing that thinking, oh, you know, that's fine. And I get close up and I look at the glasses on in the morning and I thought, did I do that? I must have had a glass of wine too many last night, you know, that time. Yeah. It does help. Yeah. It doesn't help, does it, when you, you know, you start blinking a bit towards the end of the night. No, really so, uh, no, I, it, these days it's looser than it ever was, and I'm, I'm happy with that. Yeah. So, are you alright, Dr. Yeah. yeah. So, do, we, do you want to do one more question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 When it's that, do you find that you don't really want to break, you just want to get it done, and you might spend, say, six or seven hours? Right, so I know exactly what you're saying. My, my favourite time of any painting is the very beginning of it. Uh, when I've drawn it out and I put the first layer of colour on it, I can quite often after a session leave it and never go back to it. Can't do it, I've got to carry on. Yeah. And that's what you're saying, isn't it? Yeah. You've known that you've got several hours, sometimes days ahead of you to get that done, and that becomes a bit tedious, and then you stop enjoying it. So it's why I think it's a good idea, and I always have uh, several paintings going on at the same time, especially with oils, because of the drying time. Of it. You know, if an oil painting has to dry, you know, I can use a quick drying oil, for instance, um, Griffin Alkyd, Alkyd oils, and they can dry overnight enough for you to put another layer on the next day. And so you can get through that. It's not all about experience, it's about enjoying what you're doing. And, and you're quite right, there is a stage in painting where you think, could, could easily walk away from it. Yeah. But somebody wants that portrait and you know it's not finished. <laughs> but you think to yourself, I prefer it like that, not because I don't want to carry on and do it, but it's a stage where I, pref I actually prefer it. I'd walk away from it and leave it. But you can't sell that, you know, and somebody's got to pay your mortgage, haven't they? You know, so. do, do you find when you get in that stage that it becomes if you like, like an enemy, where you've got to right in your battle with every single little problem at the other stage. Yeah, because you get a bit bored. Every ten yeah. minutes when you step back and look back, yeah, and you know, you know, you know, you know, you know. And I have got the t-shirt somewhere. I'm bored, it's got all over it. And you can get that and, it, and, you, and, and quite honestly, it's a it's it's a bit of a pathetic stage because you think that, you know, spending all these years now. Um, as a professional artist that you wouldn't feel like that. You do feel like that. There's no, no two days are the same. And forget about this, you know, oh, I'm just waiting for inspiration. That's the biggest laugh I've ever heard in my life. You know, you're never going to get anywhere with it. You cannot wait for inspiration. Um, I, I have a problem at the moment. My wife had a struggle for it some time ago. And so I, um, I, I have to admit to her, I'm so care for her, I've got somebody caring for her tonight. 
Um, so uh, luckily I'm at the studio at home and I can go in and, and I miss it tomorrow and come back again. Um, but sometimes because I'm doing that, I come back and look freshly at the painting, you know, and um, you know, you can start thinking about fresh things in your mind. Um, but it's also a big problem in that if you're just into something that is really important somewhere in your head and then you have to leave it, you know, after 20 minutes or so, then that can be a bit, you know, that can be a bit dangerous to the paint for the painting because sometimes you look at it again and you say, where was I? I've forgotten it, you know. And you know, but forget about stuff up in my art and all that sort of stuff and that I can't wait can't wait for inspiration. You know, these days are not so bad, you know. My age, but when I was younger, you know, you forget that, you know, somebody's not going to do it, say, can you do me this painting? You're not going to say, no, yeah, I'll take it, got no time to do it, but I'll deal with it, you know, uh, and you do it, because that's, that's your job, you know, like a bricklayer, a bricklayer plays bricks, an artist just a labourer, same thing, you know, but, um, yeah, you do get a bit where you think, yeah, you do an artist painting at the moment, so, done it a few times. So, in general, you're an artist that has got to paint, but not an artist that wants to paint. No, I'm an artist that wants to paint. No. I was an artist that had to paint when he was little with his right. you know, his, his, his oh, older yeah. brother. I had to feed yeah. the tables. You know, then I had to paint. Uh, these days, no, I don't want to paint these days. I just I need <coughs> to paint. I get there's not a day. Apart from accidents and health problems and going to the shop, going back, whatever. There's not a day when I won't paint. Every day is an inspiration. When I get up in the morning, I, I get insom insomnia because of all these images, and there are hundreds of images just going around inside, but I can't sleep, <coughs> I won't sleep tonight. I didn't sleep last night. You know, it's, it's a horrible thing. But I, I, I get up in the morning sometimes and I, I remember what I was going to sleep. You do sleep, but I was thinking of it just in the waking dream. And then I'll use it as a sort of inspirational thing, and I'll go in and I'll work in the studio and I'll work on it. So a lot of the ideas doesn't just come from a glass of wine with me, although it does help. It's actually in my waking dreams, you know, I've been thinking about them and the non sleep, not switching on. I'm saying it's a great idea, it's just a fact, isn't it? Yeah. Sorry, you've got one more. Did you, sorry, did you want to say? No, you were just stretching, weren't you? <laughs> I think, is that it? Anybody yeah. just, are we alright with that? Yeah, okay. Uh, right, yeah. thanks. Yeah, brilliant. Um, we uh, have a short interval now. There's some drinks poured at the back there. We'll bring the easel forward for you to uh, have a look at. Um, yeah, I'll bring it forward with these mic stands there. Um, but we've got about 10 minutes before we get back and uh, call them out. We'll do their demonstration. Um, we want to get finished quickly, just after nine they're allowing us tonight. So uh, if, if we have a ten minute break from now and then uh, if you can be seated after that, that would be great. Thank you.